What's up, Skater D here, and welcome to Holidays, where every time of the year is the most wonderful time of the year. On today's episode, it's June 14th, otherwise known as National Flag Day. <laughs> Psych! April Fools. Hopefully you didn't fall for it, and realize that today is actually April 1st. April Fools Day. A day where the jokesters, pranksters, and hucksters come out to play. A day for starting companies, starting a new YouTube channel, or letting Screwy Squirrel take over your entire broadcast network. Remember that? I sure do. Oja! Rubber! I love seeing the elaborate lengths some people go to just for a good laugh. And look, I totally get it. Not everyone is a fan of this day. Uh, but me, personally, I love it. And if you do too, then this is the holiday for you. By the way, if you stay all the way to the end of the video, I have a special announcement to make. So, on to the subject at hand, and we begin at the beginning. Just where did April Fool's Day come from? What started this tradition of pranks and jokes being pulled on the unwitting gullible masses? Well, some historians think that April Fool's Day dates back to 1582, when France switched from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar, as called for by the Council of Trent in 1563. In the Julian calendar, the new year began with the spring equinox around April 1st, which kind of makes sense since spring is often seen as a time of growth and renewal as Europe and the Northern Hemisphere emerge from their cold, dark winter. However, some folks either didn't get the memo or didn't want to start the new year on January 1st and therefore continued to celebrate the new year during the last week of March through April 1st. These poor unfortunate souls became the butt of jokes and hoaxes and were labeled April Fools. And as we continue to do so today, these pranksters of the 1600s would place paper fish on the backs of these so-called fools and refer to them as poisson d'avril, or April fish, said to symbolize a young, easily caught fish and a gullible person. Hey look, I'm just reporting what I read. Maybe I'm the fool here. Or do you do this? Have you ever done this? I've never done that. What I have done, however, is far worse. I've played quite a number of pranks and hoaxes in my day because I love April Fool's Day. Everything from the humble joy buzzer in the hand to the loosening of the cap on a salt shaker. Drawing genitals on the face of a drunken, passed out housemate. Jumping out from around the corner and shouting boo to scare somebody. Tossing a pack of firecrackers into someone's room while they slept. Oh yeah, I'm an asshole. Up to and including telling tall tales and spinning yarns, all with a straight face and an air of solemn humility. These things I did in pursuit of yucks and guffaws, and I have the bruises to prove it. Just about the only thing I haven't done is the old bucket of water above a doorframe. That's just over the top, literally. Of course, what I get up to in my free time probably isn't as interesting as some of the more widespread and elaborate hoaxes and pranks that have been carried out throughout history. According to History.com, one of the most famous April Fool's Day pranks took place on April 1st, 1957, when the BBC broadcast a report that Ticino, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, a Swiss region near the Italian border had experienced an exceptionally heavy spaghetti crop that year. The false report even included footage of people picking spaghetti off of trees and bushes, then sitting down at a table to enjoy their bounty of homegrown linguine. And now the harvest is marked by a traditional meal. Toasts to the new crop are drunk in these boccalinos. And then the waiters enter bearing the ceremonial dish. And it is, of course, spaghetti. Picked earlier in the day, dried in the sun, and so brought fresh from garden to table at the very peak of condition. For those who love this dish, there's nothing like real homegrown spaghetti. Apparently a number of British folks watching at home weren't too familiar with the Italian dish and were intrigued, completely unaware that they were being bamboozled. The prank garnered everything from angry letters asking how the BBC could broadcast such deceitful disinformation to sincere requests for information on how to grow spaghetti at home. These days, like everything else, April Fool's Day pranks have gone digital, resorting to email chain letters, blogs, web-based stores selling products that couldn't possibly exist, deep faked videos on YouTube, TikTok challenge videos, flash mobs, and social media posts going viral on Twitter and Facebook. Book. Just adding to the overall noise and nonsense that goes right along with the usual spate of disinformation and fake news. Indeed, it seems that these days you really can't believe what you see, and if something sounds too good to be true, it almost certainly is. Yes, even that Nigerian prince who wants you to hold on to his fortune while his people stage a coup. 
that was a scam. And perhaps that's why this day is one of the most hated days of the year. After all, if you can't even trust the Google homepage, who can you trust? With curmudgeons of the world spitefully raining on our parade and spoiling our fun, it does feel as though April Fool's Day has toned down quite a bit in recent years. Of course, you never know. Waiting just around the corner could be lurking the greatest prank ever pulled. And with a sucker born every minute, the biggest fool of all just may be you. So better safe than sorry. Keep your eyes peeled and trust no one. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I have been your host, Elvis Presley, and I have a bridge in Brooklyn I'd love to sell you. Contact me for more information. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you've got a favorite prank or just want to confess your April Fool's Day sins, do so in the comments below. What's the most obvious scam you've ever fallen for? Got any elaborate hoaxes you've pulled off in your day? And lastly, did you know that the word gullible isn't even in the dictionary? Seriously, go look it up. And now for the special announcement. As a thank you for watching all the way to the end, I present to you the rare and ever so elusive egress.